Say. Hey. 
All right, shalom and God bless you. Welcome to another wonderful day on Ask the Pastor, where you get to ask biblical questions and get biblical answers from the pastor that we have right here in the studio. Remember, our team scripture for this program is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, which says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's our team scripture. So all we do here is to look into the scriptures and receive biblical um, questions and also give biblical answers. And we're not claiming to be an island of knowledge, so we also um, have the phone line open and also the SMS and WhatsApp platform open for you to send in those references you might have in terms of any teaching you've come across on Bright TV that you think you have a contrary opinion to or send them with scriptural references and we're sure that iron will sharpen iron even today. Um, this moment, I want to also remind you that you can join us on our social media platforms on Facebook, YouTube, at Bride Assembly One. And for those who are joining us on the Bride Radio app, which you can download from any of the Play Store, which you have, um, do ensure that you call the number plus 234-8065-9286-53. I'll take that again for calls. Call plus 234-8065-9286. And five three, and then if you want to send in your questions through SMS and WhatsApp, send them to plus two three four eight zero two five two nine eight zero two six. That is SMS and WhatsApp plus two three four eight zero two five two nine eight zero two six. With us today, we have our pastor, and um, as you have on the screen, my name is Brad Godson, and with us today we have our pastor, and that is Pastor 
Thank you, Brother Buka. Shalom to the Bride of Christ around the world. Apologies for starting behind time. But we are here to feed um, around God's word. We are here at the Lord's table, feeding around his word. And I trust that the Lord will give an answer of peace to every question that will be asked today. Mm -hmm. As my brother always says, we don't claim to be an island of knowledge. No, no, no. We don't claim to know it all. So please, you could call in and um, add to our little knowledge, correct us if we are wrong, because it's not our desire and intention to be wrong. Rather, we, just, we are just Bible believers who want to clarify everything happening in Christendom through the scriptures. So please, if you have better understanding, feel free to let us know. We are open to correction. Thank you, and I beg you, stay tuned with us till the end of this broadcast. God bless you. You are welcome once again. All right, you have it there. Stay tuned to the end of this program. Okay, since we have a call already, Shalom and God bless you. This asks the pastor. Shalom. Okay, we seem unable to hear you. Please do keep trying to call, and um, we will have other questions coming in through SMS and WhatsApp as the questions comes in. We hope to hear those questions. Okay, we're going to go on a brief break. And when we come back, it's still as the pastor. Don't touch the die. Are you ready for an adventure filled with faith, fun, and unforgettable memories? Look no further. Our annual youth camp is back. Team, with God, all things are possible. Date, 24 to 27th of March. Location, at the Bright Assembly Lagos Church. Prophet. I have taken one church, pastor from one church to my village. I've taken this out to my village. I will say, Do you really need this one? You only need Christ. Mm. And once you found Christ, you have found deliverance. Hallelujah. Continue. Shalom to the bride of Christ worldwide. Join us every Wednesday night. All right, welcome back to Ask the Pastor. And yes, it's time to have those biblical questions as they come in. Remember, this is not for marriage counseling or dream interpretation or for prophecy. So let's stick to biblical questions as they come. And um, okay, since we have a caller, Shalom and God bless you, this is Ask the Pastor. Okay, since we still can't get across to those who are calling us, um, let's have the questions that come in through SMS and WhatsApp and let's see as much as we can take. We have this caller, uh, okay, this question from Sister Unka Elizabeth from Cameroon. Unka Elizabeth from Cameroon says, Sir, I have read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2 to 6, also Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, and um, can't get that scripture rightly, but uh, also referring to Romans. Okay, let's see if we can get this caller. Shalom and God bless you. This is Axe Pastor. Shalom, God bless you. You're connected to us, Pastor. Well done. For today. Okay, God bless you. Now we can hear you. Your name and where you're calling us from, please. My name is Sister Divine Favor from Nazareth. Sister Divine Favor from Nazareth State, right? From the Boeing State. Oh, Boeing uh, State. God bless you, Sister Divine Favor. God bless you. This is the Pastor. Go on with your question. We'd like to hear from you right now. Okay. So my question, my question is this. Please, I want to know, is there any that God can Is there any sin that God cannot forgive? Is that your question? Yes, that is that. Is there, because yeah. uh, your line your seems line to be breaking. breaking. Yeah. Uh, Sister Divine Favor, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. God bless you. Your question is, is there any sin that God cannot forgive? Yes, sir. Okay, let the Bible answer you. Do you have your Bible with you? 
Yes, sir. All right. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 12 and verse 31. Okay. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 31. I want you to read it for us. Divine, okay. sister, divine favor. 12 31. 31, 31. Okay, 31. Yes. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Who, who is? But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto Who is speaking here? Hello? And who is speaking here? Um, it's you that I was talking. Okay, can you see it? Does this answer your question? Yes, but I don't know the sin against the Holy Ghost. The blasphemy of the Ligos. You don't know the blasphemy of the Ligos. Okay. Yes. Let's let's go back to start reading from verse twenty-two. Okay. Verse twenty-two. Then there was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, in so much that the blind and dumb both sick and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, "Is not this the son of David?" <coughs> but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, "You say the God not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils." And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, "Every kingdom divided against itself." Okay, to save, <coughs> Sister Divine Favor, to save time, go to okay. verse go to verse thirty two. Okay, thirty two. And whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. Neither in neither in this world, neither in the world. So do you understand what the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is? To see the Holy Ghost in operation, to yeah. see the Holy Ghost at work, and you know, but because yeah. of envy, you are now calling the walking of the Holy Ghost, you are calling it occultic, evil, satanic. That is a blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Okay. Um, but please, let me... I, Hello? Yes, we are with you. Okay. So please, um, after this question, a person is texting us to me. Now, there was something that happened to me before I got money. And I've been asking God for a message about it. And the thing that I I don't know whether I'll say God, whether God is hearing the prayer. Or... So that's a really No, no, question. no. God, okay, turn your Bible again to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, okay. verse 13. Okay. Do I read? Let, let, let her read. Since it's a, okay. a message, let her read it for us so that it will sink deep. Proverbs, Proverbs verse 13. 13. Verse 13. It should be on your screen now if you are watching the screen. So, yeah. Okay. He that covered up his feet are not perfect. Uh -huh. But whoever confesses and forgives him that have mercy. So, you, which other assurance do you need that God has forgiven you? Are you seeing? <laughs> are you seeing the word of God? It says yes, when, when you confess and forsake, to forsake there is your repentance. Once you confess and forsake that sin, He say you will have mercy. So you don't need an angel to appear to you and tell you your sins are forgiven before you know your sins are forgiven. This is the principle. This is what, how God forgives sins. Once you confess and forsake that sin, it is forgiven already. So stop dwelling on it. So when somebody like you with you feels that God has not forgiven. That's, you are, you are, you are having guilt. You are, that's, that's different from forgiveness. It, now it is your own feeling. According to the scripture, God has already forgiven you the moment you confessed and forsook that sin. Any other thing you are having, maybe it's personal guilt, or it could be the devil trying to condemn you. 
And yes, she goes to bring the um, the husband of daddy's message that was playing on the TV. So he actually mentioned that thing. That it was a thing of immorality, actually. So the pastor deceived him. According to what daddy said yesterday, it was like, uh, even if there may be a person yourself, yourself, you meet yourself, and you've not done the actual thing. Some people will say nothing has happened, that it's, it's, it's the same thing that I've done. I know we're going to have to be on that pastor. The pastor was deceiving me, telling me that the actual thing is when you have the sex. Am I not that? So, well, whatever it is, whatever it is, Sister Divine Fable, yeah. you have okay. confessed it and you have forsook it. You already yes. have mercy. You should not be condemned anymore. Okay. Any okay. voice that is bringing condemnation is not the voice of God. Okay, sir. God bless you, man. Thank you, very much. Right. Welcome. God bless you, Sister Divine Mercy. Nice to hear from you from a boy in state. All right, we'll move on to other questions. And we had this question on the screen uh, referring to certain scriptures uh, saying, I've read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2 to 6, Hebrews chapter 1, 1 to 2. I can't get the other scripture, but also going on says Romans 16, verse 25, and Daniel chapter 9, verse 22 to 24. I understand this as if prophecy ended when the Bible was completed and the revelation was given only to prophets mm. and the apostles who wrote the Bible. Can you please explain it well to me? I am Sister Unka. No, this no. From Canada. Okay, let's read the scriptures so that I don't um, take it out of context. Okay. Ephesians chapter 3. Can we have that, that screen on the... Just that's um, question on the screen. So let's read the scriptures. Ephesians 3, 2 to 6. Mm -hmm. What does it say? If ye, Ephesians chapter 3, 2 to 6. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Okay. As I wrote, um, we are familiar with this words. one. What was the next scripture? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. Okay, God. Verse spoke. 1 and 2. Yeah. God has 100 times speaking through to us now through his yeah. son. Okay. Then um, the next scripture. Next one, Romans chapter 16. No, it, Roma, no we didn't get that scripture. The third well. one. We didn't the get the third one. one. Very clear. So Romans 16, 25. Verse 25. <clears throat> Um, says, now unto him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Okay, well, to, to save time, um, I understand this as if prophecy ended when the Bible was completed. No, God is still speaking to us. It depends on what you mean by prophecy. God is still speaking. And we even have it recorded that two olive trees will prophesy yes. <laughs> after the rapture. Mm -hmm. So God is speaking. And the last scripture, Daniel chapter 9, says that to seal up the prophecy, that will be at the 70th week. Mm -hmm. That's the 70th week. So that's when the, the prophecies will be sealed up. Mm -hmm. Well, let me explain my understanding to you. Not as though we can't add anything anymore, rather. We can't add anything anymore to the world of salvation. Mm -hmm. The foundation has been laid. Mm -hmm. It's just like in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Who received the law? It was Moses. Mm -hmm. Everything concerning how they should walk with God mm -hmm. was given to Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses gave them God's law before Moses passed on. Yeah. But after Moses, there were other prophets. Mm -hmm. And there was no addition to the word of Moses, no subtraction. But God still spoke. Yes. God prophesied. God prophesied the dispassion, prophesied because the, the, the Holy yes. Ghost is a living ministry. Yeah. As long as the people of God are on earth, mm. are still in the world, mm. the Holy Ghost will continue to speak to them. Yeah. But concerning that covenant mm. that bound them with God, the whole covenant, everything they needed to know mm. on how to walk with God was settled with Moses already. Mm -hmm. So such that every other prophet that came, if the people, if the prophet is prophesying that the people should turn back to God, mm. all he will tell them is to turn back mm. to the law that God gave Moses. Mm. So is it in the New Testament. Mm. The foundation has been laid by the apostles. Mm. So we can't have anybody come with another word to add to mm. our word of salvation. Everything we need to know about our salvation has been given to us by the apostles. Mm. 
So we are only to contend for the faith once delivered. Mm -hmm. See that statement in Jude chapter th chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. There's something there. Okay, Jude verse 3 says, Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, mm -hmm. it was needful for me to write unto you and exalt you that ye should earnestly contend. Now, for the, the next statement, the, the concluding statement is my emphasis. Which was once, which was once, once and for all. Unto the, unto the saints. The faith, the Christian faith has been delivered once and for all by the apostles. Mm -hmm. So there can be no, how will I put it, no additional prophecy to the word of God. Any other prophecy we have now is to exalt, edify, you can prophesy of things that will happen. But concerning salvation, the formula, the pattern, the principle, everything has been given to us by the apostolic ministry. So if that's what you mean, because I'm trying to understand that clearly, okay. that's my own understanding of whether prophecy can be added or not. But when you talk of prophecy to edify, to exalt and comfort, definitely that is a living ministry. Yes, yeah. God will always raise people to speak to his people. Yeah. We have prophets in this church. You cannot ask us about prophecy here mm -hmm. because we see it in operation. Yeah. But concerning the word for our salvation, it is settled once and for all. Yeah. So God bless you, our sister from Cameroon. Right, but in you. case um, I'm not um, answering the question that you intended to ask, mm -hmm. maybe I'm the one that don't understand. You can send again or call in so we can understand ourselves better. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Sister Anka from Cameroon. Okay, we have another caller. Shalom and God bless you. This is Ask the Pastor. Okay, good evening, sir. God bless you. You are connected to Ask the Pastor, your name and where you are calling us from. Okay, I'm Ruben, calling from Enugu. God bless you, brother. Ruben, please go on with your question or your contribution. Okay, thank you, sir. Please, uh, I have this concern concerning... Sorry, don't feel bad about this, but you know, I just want to, I just want to balance this thing with the scripture. You know, okay. the pastor usually say we should not take alcohol. Okay. Yeah, but you know, I don't know this particular scripture. I'm not too good with scriptures, but Apostle Paul says something. He say, let no man judge you in the sabbath day or yeah. in what colossians, you or what you colossians chapter 2 verse 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. so what's uh, your question uh, sir thank you very much so i don't i don't want you to feel bad or maybe no 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 i feel bad, bad. <laughs> that's why we are here sir. why you uh, why uh, do you think we then, feel bad jesus christ also said something <laughs> again i think when his disciples were eating with unwashed hands also so the pharisees were about condemning them he said what goes into a man does not defy a man, but is what, what comes is out yeah. that defies a man. Okay. So I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Let, let's do justice to your scriptures. My, my apologies, uh, Bra Ruben from Indugu, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right, Bra, Bra Ruben. The first sir? scripture you quoted, you yeah. quote out of context or without understanding properly. Okay. Under the old covenants. You can see this in Leviticus chapter 11. Yeah. There were clean food and unclean food. Okay. Yes, there were things that they could eat, and there were things that were not permitted for them to eat. So when yeah. Apostle Paul comes in the New Testament, telling you that let no man judge you in anything you are eating or drinking, he's trying to tell you that there is no food unclean before God anymore. Okay. Yes. For instance, I love to use catfish and snail. Do, yeah. Do you eat catfish? Yeah. I eat catfish. I eat snail. I eat all of them. Oh, God bless you, sir. In fact, mm. we are we are colleagues because I love the roasted <laughs> catfish and I love mm. the fried snail very well. But okay. if we were under the law of Moses, do you know that we were not permitted to eat such? Yes, yes. I've so when yeah. Apostle Paul is saying, let no man judge you, that is what he meant. Okay. Then, concerning drinking, yeah. truly alcohol was not spoken against in the Old Testament. It's only yeah. in the book of Proverbs that you see God advising his children not to drink alcohol. Truly yeah. so, but, but that, that's in the Old Testament. When he says he should not judge you by what you drink, when yeah. they were having Nazarite law, they were not permitted to take even grape, grape juice, okay. because it is from that grapefruit that they get their alcoholic wine. So he said, even the grape juice, you can't drink it. So are you seeing where it comes in? If somebody okay. is performing a Nazarite vow, 
So Apostle Paul is only trying to tell you that under grace now, all those animals are clean. All food are clean. See 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. Let Brother Ebuka read it. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. 1 Timothy 4, verse 2. Verse 3. Go to verse, verse 3. 3. Forbidding to marry and, com and commanding to abstain from meat, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them Can you who see it? believe and know the truth. Then verse 4. For every creature, every of, God creature is good. of God is good. If you want to eat centipede and cockroach, nobody should judge you. No, 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 no. It's not a laughing yes. matter. Okay, okay. If you have the appetite for it, you have the ability to eat centipede, you have the ability mm. to eat roasted cockroach, yeah. it is not a sin. Nobody should judge you. The Bible says every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Why? Verse 5 says, for it is what? Sanctified, Sanctified by the word, by of, the word of God and, God prayer. and prayer. So when he says, okay. let no man judge you, under the old covenant, if you had seen me and Brother Ruben eating snail and catfish, you will judge us. We are unclean. Yeah. We are eating unclean things. But he said, let no man judge you anymore. So he's speaking of now that you are in grace, don't continue with the ordinances of the law. The ordinances have been fulfilled by Christ, including the Sabbath day. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Now, coming to Matthew 15, the second scripture you quoted. Yeah. What goes into the mouth is what defiles the man. If you take a call, oh, let me give you a gallon, maybe five um, liters of, um, uh, which one is very strong? Spirit. <laughs> kai, 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 kai. Thank you. Five liters and you drink it. Yeah. Your attitude will change. Is that not right? Definitely. So Definitely. you'll be going. You will see somebody's wife, and you will touch her, oh, girl, you are too fine. Are you not defiled? Definitely, yeah. yeah. So you must balance it. Or somebody that is taking uh, mar marijuana, Igbo, as we call yes. it in Nigeria, it yeah. will make him eye and misbehave. That's true. So That's true. is he not defiled? So even naturally, naturally, Nature teaches us that there are some things that affect us and are not good for us. But these things could be good medically if the pharmacists take it and use the right dose to prepare a drug for you. Those ones are different cases. But for you to consume them, they will alter your behavior. So in other words, they will defile you. Okay. Yes, they okay. will defile you. Let's read Proverbs 23. Let me add the scripture to that so that you will see okay. what the Bible says. Proverbs 23 mm. from verse... Verse, um, let's take it from verse 29. Proverbs, Proverbs 23, 23 from verse 29. Who at woe? Who at woe? And who at sorrow? Who at sorrow? Who at contention? Who at contention? He's asking the question. Babbling, who at babbling? Who at wounds without cause? Wounds without cause. Who at redness of eyes? Eh, who? They that tarry long at the one. Uh -huh. They that mm -hmm. go to seek mixed wine. Uh -huh. So see verse 31. What does verse 31 say? thou upon the wine when it is red. This is a command not to drink. Okay. It says what? When it given. No, it, read it again. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red. It says don't look on it. You know, there's this saying, you can drink but don't get drunk. Don't get but what is this scripture saying? It says don't even look at the wine. Yeah. Can you see what the yeah. Spirit of God was saying? And Proverbs hmm. has nothing to do with whether it's Old or New Testament, everything in Proverbs is for the children of God, yeah, not generation. Yeah, yeah. So can you see what he said? He said, look not down upon the wine when it is red. Uh -huh. When Read it on. moveth its color in the cup, uh -huh. when it moveth itself aright, at the last it biteth like a serpent mm -hmm. and stingeth like now, a mother. Now, Brother Ruben, see verse 33. Thy eyes okay. shall behold strange Can you women, see that your behavior will be altered and when thy you heart shall yeah. alter perverse things. Uh -huh. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down the midst in of the sea, midst of the sea. Oh. or as he that lieth upon the top <laughs> of a mast. They have stricken me, shall wait, thou wait. say. Hold on. Go to verse, chapter 20, verse 1 also. Okay, chapter 20 okay. and verse 1. Wine is a mocker. Eh? Wine it again. is a mocker. Mm. Wine is what? A mocker. Uh -huh. Strong drink is raging. Uh -huh. Whosoever is Whosoever deceived thereby is not wise. Now go to chapter mm. 31, verse 4. Verse 5, 
chapter 31 from verse 4. It is for kings. Mm. No, no, no. Ah, Brother Ibuka, you just withdrew from the word of God. Okay. You just it removed. It is not, Thank rather. Thank you. <laughs> Proverbs 31 verse 4. It is not for kings. It is not for kings. Oh, the Bible amen. says that the Lord has made us what? Kings and King priests. Yes. Oh, yeah, read yeah. It is not for kings, mm. holy men. It is not for kings to drink wine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nor for princes strong drink. Uh -huh. Least they drink and forget they the forget law. They forget the law. It's water that behavior. Mm. And pervert the judgment of any of their people. So verse 6 and 7, we should drink. Give strong drink unto him that is ready if to perish. If that is ready to perish, you want to go to earth. Drink and wine mm. unto those that be of heavy hearts. Uh -huh. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. So that is it, mm. sir. Alcohol mm. is not for Christians. That is why it is only permitted on the Lord's table because of what it signifies in a little quantity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. only place a Christian is permitted to drink. <laughs> Uh, wow, thank you very much, sir. Uh, yeah. God bless you, sir. <laughs> all right, sir. All right, sir. God bless you, sir. All right, God bless you, sir. Thank you for calling, Brother Ruben. We have another caller. Shalom and God bless you. This is Ask the Pastor. You are connected. Your name and where you are calling us from. Okay, good evening. I'm Evelyn calling from Asaba. Sister Evelyn from Asaba, you have to reduce the volume of your TV set. We can hear ourselves in the background. Okay. Uh, reduce the volume or stay away from that particular area so that we can speak to you through the phone and you listen to us through the phone. Okay, I've moved away. Can you hear me now? Yes, Sister Evelyn from Asaba, right? Yes. All right, go on with your question. Please, thank you very much. I've been enjoying people's program. Bless God. But last week, I wasn't paying much attention, but Pastor Moses was mentioning something about using roll on. I want to ask, is it a thing? Using what? Roll on. Roll on, roll ah, on. Is it a sin? It's not a sin, no. <laughs> okay, so a Christian can use the roll on. Hey, very well. Even perfume. Okay, please, I want you to clarify. It's roll on, perfume. Is it, can a believer use it? Because it was naturally that you use lime. But I wasn't really paying much attention. I, I, okay, I do remember the service. No, I no, do no, remember yeah. what the pastor was saying. He was saying. Uh, it, 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 somebody came to lecture you people there about. Lime is also good. Okay, okay, uh, okay, so. okay, okay. Yes. Um, um, if I do recall, what he was saying was even for those who might say they don't have money to buy a whole loan. Okay, to so don't somebody, have money. Yes, somebody came across, somebody came in a meeting and taught them that you can also use lime. Okay, lime. Like it's for purpose, yes. Okay. Yeah, that was so what he was I saying. He was, not that saying he was not saying that Roland is bad or you should not use it. Yes, I wasn't really paying attention, but I met that part of it. Okay. Well, I believe you understand it better now. Yes, I do. All right. God bless you, Sister Evelyn. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you for calling. All right. <laughs> All right. We move on to other questions as they come in through SMS and WhatsApp. And we have this question from um, G Tams. Be with Kimi. Forgive me if I didn't pronounce that well. So let me just use G terms from Delta State, Nigeria. It says, Shalom, Pastor. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 onwards refers to the talent the master gave to servants. Um, the talent means what? We did answer this question last week, but okay. maybe well, you might the just talents want to are the spiritual it. gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Mm. Once you are born again, you are born again into the body of Jesus Christ. And it is a body of gifts because every joint must supply. Mm -hmm. Everybody has something to offer in the body of Christ. So once you are born again, there's a gift, at least a gift you receive from the Lord. So the talents are those spiritual gifts. It is expected that you serve the Lord with those gifts. Those are the talents. First Corinthians 12, verse 8 to 11. And then in verse um, 28, you see the gift of helps and government. Mm. Those are the talents that the Bible speaks of. All right, God bless you, bro. Um, our beloved from Delta State. I don't know if the brother is sister, so maybe not also call, do that. Okay, we have another caller. Shalom and God bless you. This is Ask the Pastor. Uh, good evening, Pastor. Shalom, sir. Good, good evening, Pastor. Good evening, sir. I'm Sunday from Nasara State. God bless you, brother. Sunday from Nasara State. Uh, you can go with my your question. Uh, my question is. Uh, Although I send it through the comments, I don't know whether you can read it because I'm not watching. I just called. 
Okay, we have not read any question from Nasarawa. The difference between tribulation and great tribulation, is there any difference? Between? Tribulation and great tribulation, is there any difference? Yes, uh, there, are, there are differences. When you say All right. the, when you say D, the great tribulation, that means um, there's yeah. something you have in mind. You okay. are speaking of a definite event, D. Okay. So D, that means you are speaking of a particular one, a definite one. But tribulation okay. generally, the yeah. people of God have always gone through tribulation from the beginning of time. Okay. And then even we as Christians, in Acts yeah. chapter 15, verse um, 24, the verse 22, yeah. the Bible says that we must through much tribulation enter yeah. into the kingdom of God. That's verse, yeah. um, verse what? Acts yeah. 15, verse what? I can't get okay. It. okay. That we must through much tribulation yeah. enter into the kingdom of God. So all these are tribulation, tribulation, but the great tribulation, yeah. there are, there's the one in Revelation chapter 7. Mm. The one in Revelation chapter 7 is speaking of what the church, the bride of Christ, all that they went through from mm. the beginning of the church to the end, okay. to the rapture. But what we always refer to as the great tribulation, the one that is coming after the rapture, mm. that one is specifically right. for the Jews. What they will yeah. suffer, the persecution they will suffer under the Antichrist. That is the okay. great by, tribulation. By then, the Gentiles will no longer be here. Who, that time. By then, would have gone. Will be with the Lord. All right. So that is the great tribulation. Okay. It's also called the time of Jacob's trouble, and there are many other synonyms that they use to define it also. But that is yeah. what we mean by the great tribulation. It happens after the okay. rapture. It is for Israel, yeah. and you can see that in Revelation yeah, eleven, it. Revelation twelve. Okay. Right, so I have a. You have my a question. My second question. Okay. Okay. Is it biblical the for the corpse of a Christian to be carried to the church for funeral service? For the corpse <laughs> of a Christian to well, be carried to the church auditorium for funeral service? Well, there is no scripture against it. There's no scripture okay. against it. It depends on. Um, right. For instance, maybe that person is the pastor of the church and they feel that's yeah. the best place for the funeral. There's no scripture against okay. it. It's alright. There's no scripture against it. Okay. Uh, God bless you, bro. God bless you, bro. So, uh, for those who were calling and might need that scripture, the scripture Pastor Lundi was earlier referring to is Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Acts 14, not verse 15. 22. Thank you, sir. All right. So, we'll move on to other questions and uh, let's uh, have those questions coming through SMS and WhatsApp and also questions coming through the phone lines. All right, this question <coughs> is, uh, good evening, Pastor. Please, is it right for believers to celebrate Valentine's Day? Sister Wonderful. Glory from Yaoundé. I uh, guess, Sister Glory, you just got connected to us. <laughs> because if you have been listening to us for a while, you would have known that every period, every Valentine period as it's approaching, mm -hmm. we start playing our overseas messages. Mm -hmm. Where he blasted it. Mm -hmm. Valentine is a substitute for Jesus. Mm -hmm. It is wrong. What love are you celebrating? Mm -hmm. How does the love of Valentine affect you in any way? Mm -hmm. Don't allow the customs of the world get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. Not just Valentine, even let me let me not go. Let me not go that way. <laughs> but let's let's limit it to Valentine. <laughs> There's nothing spiritual about it. There's nothing Christian about it. In fact, it is a diversion from Christ Jesus. The only love we should be talking about and celebrating is the love of God to us, us through, to us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Valentine is a substitute. It's a subtle way of Satan removing attention from Christ. Valentine didn't die for you. Jesus died for you. So how come the whole world is embracing the story of a man that died for a girl, but they cannot embrace that of a man that died for the whole world. So it is a satanic attempt to remove attention from Christ to another one. Mm -hmm. So Valentine, and, and let's, okay, let's, let's be practical. The Bible says we should prove all things. That period is the most immoral period in the world. Mm -hmm. In fact, Valentine's Day is more immoral than Christmas because in many places of the world, they don't celebrate Christmas. Christmas yeah. But Valentine, 
It is a period of sexual immorality. Anybody that says in any elevation, be my vow, be my vow, you know the meaning. The end game is sexual immorality. So how does that make us better? Unless most, there's nothing spiritual, anybody that spiritualizes it is evidence that you yourself, you are not spiritual, but you are religious. There's nothing, there is no ounce of spirituality in Valentine's Day celebration. There is no virtue in it. There is nothing to learn from it. It is a substitute for Jesus, and it is something that, it is a celebration that promotes promiscuity and immorality. So it is not for Christians. In fact, when such a period comes, we should even speak it. Let the whole world know your stand, that you're against it. Lift a voice against it. Share messages con con contrary to it so that people will know that there are a remnant in the land who are not moved with the, with, with the, world, with the world that has entered into Christianity. There is no answer of spirituality in Valentine. It is not for Christians. It has no Christian origin. It has no impact to our spiritual life. It only promotes immorality. It only promotes promiscuity. So it is not for us. From Valentine's Day, many abortions are committed. From that event, from that one day, many abortions are committed. So sexual immorality, murder, abortion is murder. Those are the effects of Valentine's Day. What else do you want? So it's not spiritual at all. all it's right, not for God Christians. Our, our overseer preached a sermon. Mm. Our advice are you listen to it. Valentine or Jesus. <laughs> when you finish listening to it, all oh, your questions concerning Valentine's Day will be answered. Or oh, another one, um, a substitute. Uh, there's one about substitutes. But listen to Valentine or Jesus so that you will get a clear picture. Forget that many churches promote it. They, you, that, that's a church that has thrown Jesus outside. Many Christians don't know that in, the Bible prophesied in this generation that Jesus Christ will be outside, outside the church, knocking at the, knocking at the door of individuals that were lying. Mm. Any church that is doing Valentine's Day has kicked the Lord Jesus outside the church. It's not more a church of Jesus. It's the church of that pastor. Go and listen to that sermon and hear what our daddy and the Lord did concerning it. God bless you. All right, God bless you. Okay, we have a caller. Please reduce the volume of the TV set or stay away from wherever you are. Oh, please. Can't hear you. Okay, we can't hear you. Let's go on with other questions through SMS and WhatsApp. Uh, we've just answered this question from Sister Glory. From the person that is showing the question again wants okay. likes <laughs> Valentine, that's why. Okay, we have uh, a Sister Anka Elizabeth. I don't know if you're trying to rephrase your question or this is a follow-up question. So Shalom, great okay. chance is of the Okay, is she the person that asked earlier? I think she's oh, the same person wow. who asked a question earlier. So, uh, says, Shalom, okay, we'll come back to your question, Sister Anka. Let's um, have this caller. Shalom and God bless you. This <laughs> God bless you, this ask the pastor. <laughs> My sister, not there. Uh, sister, you have to call us network. back. Or Prairie, please um, try a different line because the network seems, from your end, seems to be having some issues. It's seriously breaking. We couldn't hear you clearly. So let's go back to the question from Sister. No, Sister Elizabeth's question. We're not done with that. I think that's a different question. Okay, it says, Shalom, great teachers of the light, the true word of God. God bless you, Sister Elizabeth. It says, I really appreciate what God is doing through you. My question is, the children of Israel asked meat from God, which was given alongside with plague. Could they not get meat from the cattle they came out of Egypt with? This is Sister Anka Elizabeth from Cameroon. That's a good question. Yeah. It's true. But the cattle were most especially reserved for their um, sacrifices, daily sacrifices, weekly sacrifices, monthly sacrifices, and annual sacrifices. So they couldn't eat it. And then it was also a figure of their, of their wealth. Mm -hmm. Don't forget they are traveling. If they consume all the cattle, mm -hmm. what would they have left? Mm -hmm. So they didn't touch it. It's a good question. That means you're studying. Mm -hmm. Many people are not even aware of that. Mm -hmm. They didn't eat the cattle they left Egypt with. Mm -hmm. So that was why they asked God for meat. Mm -hmm. But by the time they, you could see, before they entered the promised land, mm -hmm. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh okay. so were talking to Moses. Why? They said they have plenty cattle, cattle yeah. and that this place is a place of cattle. So that truly means that they did not eat the cattle. Mm -hmm. But it was used for sacrifices and many other things. Mm -hmm. uh, that was why they asked God for meat. Okay. You, you, are, you are in line. Okay. God bless they you. didn't eat it because it was used for sacrifices, and apart from that, uh, uh, in fact, people that rear cattle don't eat cattle anyhow. Yeah. 
They don't eat anyhow because the only that don't read, that <laughs> because it's their trade. Mm. So I believe so. Okay. But most especially for their sacrifices, cattle and the flocks. Okay. Okay. We have another caller. Shalom and God bless you. This as the pastor. Shalom, the bride of Christ. Shalom, your call. I'm giving you my God bless you. Yes. Your name and where you're calling us from? Sister Florence. Sister Florence from South Africa. Sister Florence from South Africa. God bless you. Please go on with your question or your contribution. Yes, my brother. I just wanted to clarify you. Because the dinner is coming in my heart since yesterday. By the grace of God, I located the ministry since 2000 and um, about six years now, so let me So the first thing I'm learning there is the covering of the year. Okay. The thing is that the secretary is going to be using the covering of the year. So it has been an issue with me in the church. Like most of the it was a very feminine on me because at church I'm the only sister who cover my hair with my cap. You know the hat that the woman put on me. So next to do the statement, the question that the sister asked in church. That why did the sister put on her? And the brother started explaining that the woman the hair is covering the head. And Brother Brian said, in the olden days in the Catholic Church, we know we used to put on hearts. And now we took it as a tradition. Now if you go to villages, the people who put on even cars as a tradition, because they use the first one. Mm -hmm. Whatever they were, that is not part of the Bible. That Brother Brian can go through the law, that is tradition. That the woman, the hair must cover the hair. You don't allow to put on clothes. You don't allow to put on clothes in the church. Okay, so. so and the sister put it on a wig. So, do I put on the wig or do I cover my hair? Okay. Because the clothes you feel to do. Okay, what's her question? Her question is should she put on the wig or should she cover her hair? Because they are saying, the brown mites are saying she can put on wig. But that the okay, of Sister the Florence, is not, uh, what, what do you thing. believe? Sister Florence, are you with us? What do you believe? Yes, I'm here. What do you believe? What do I believe? What do you believe? I believe in COVID-19, because when I read this message first about covering the world, that same week, I tried to go to church without covering my head. I got rebuked. I was three good times. You got rebuked three good times. My head. So you see, um, you are you are already balanced. You don't need any other uh, clarification. You said you got rebuked three good times when you wanted to go to your church without your hair covered. That's um, the Lord rebuked you. That's to let you know that you are in line with the scriptures. So. Your question should you, you don't ask what should you do. Follow what you believe and what the Lord has led you to do. Cover your air. Brabram is not our standard, is not our absolute. The Bible is our absolute. I challenge every message believer listening to me. Go, they should go and look for the vision that Brother Abraham saw after his mother's death. When his mother died, he was disturbed. The Lord comforted him with a revelation. Where he said he saw a young woman walked into a, the place was like, um, should I call it a theater or something where many people were gathered. The woman had a air covering. He explained it in mm. different sermons. So I challenge every message pastor and believer that is listening to me. Go and research the vision that Abraham saw about his mother's death after his mother died. And God wanted to comfort him to let him know that she had eternal life. They should go and research it and see what he saw of a glorified woman. She came into a service with her head covered. So doesn't that tell you that air covering is even vindicated by Brother Abraham? Brother Abraham's issue was with the women who cut their hair. You will cut your hair and then you will cover, you will cover your head. 
that was his issue generally. But to say air covering, mm. well, let me even leave it this way. Whether Brother Abraham or not, what does the Bible say? Mm. The Bible proves that the women should cover their head when praying or prophesying. So it is a, mm. it is a biblical ordinance and we all must follow it. And you are the Spirit of God. Mm. You wanted to go to service with your hair uncovered. The Lord rebuked you. So, Sister Florence, continue with what you already established in. Don't be confused by anybody. Stay with the Bible. Stay with the Word. Thank you so much, Lord. God bless you, man. God bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, Sister Florence. Mm -hmm. Thank you for calling in all the way from South Africa. All right, we have other questions coming in. And uh, we have another caller. Shalom and God bless you. This ask the pastor. Shalom, you are connected to us, the pastor. Please reduce the volume of your TV set or the medium you are watching before you call in so that we can hear you clearly. Sh and you can hear shalom. us. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom. Shalom, Pastor. Shalom. Good evening. Please let us know your name and where you are calling us from. All right? My name is Patrick I'm calling from Cardona. Okay, God bless you, Sister Patience from Kaduna. Go on with your question. The after death, when stand by the that he has died no more, nothing is mm -hmm. And I want to ask, the spirit that left a man, he will know that he has already lived before, and he will not know, did the spirit going to know that he has lived before? And the way I need the spirit going to know where he lived before and then he have lived before. I'm, I, I didn't hear you clearly. Maybe you did well because after death is judgment. Uh -huh. So yeah, when the person dies, how does the spirit know where the person had lived before? Uh -uh. Yes. Yeah. So Sister Patience. Yeah. I hope you know that it is your body. Your body is your house. The real you is your spirit. Yes, I understand because it so, is confusing me. No, no, no. Because so, my spirit, we know that we have lived and go. Yes, now, once you die, you have only left this physical body. You are still alive. Oh. <laughs> you, have only left, you have only left this physical body. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. And I want to say, when we come back together, the spirit will identify as a man or a woman. The spirit of a man will be identify as a man. Now uh, we were put in this it? we were put in this physical body because of God's purpose, procreation and other things. So when we are all sons of God, are you with me? Yes, I'm hearing you. God created us male and female. He's a God of yes. varieties. So it doesn't matter when you come back who you are is who you will be. But okay, you don't you 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 will not procreate procreate anymore. Mm -hmm. Neither will you as a woman have your monthly periods again and things like that. But your spirit will always remain your spirit. Who you who God created you to be is who you will be. Okay, you lost that <laughs> Hey. All right, since our patience for Cardinal, <laughs> uh, trust that answered your question. Quite an interesting one there. All right, we'll move on to other questions as they come in. And this is from, okay, we've answered this question from Sister Anka from Cameroon um, on the meet. We just finished answering that question. Let's move to the next question through SMS and WhatsApp. And this is from Sister Ibuku from Abuja. It says, Judges 8, verse 24, and Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of God that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites, shared via. Okay, this is from the King James Bible. Okay, we'll come back to your question. Let's take this call and hear what our caller has to say. Shalom and God bless you. This is Ask the Pastor. Your name and where you're calling us from. Please, your name again and where you're calling us from. Oh, oh. We lost that call. Okay, back to the question through SMS and WhatsApp on Gideon. I'm asking the people to bring their earrings. And, um, okay, they had golden earrings. I told them, give every one of them to bring their earrings of their prey. And then it says, please, sir, if one uses earring, does that mean she is a slave? Yes, so, Sister Ibuku. From Abuja. Yes. 
That's the origin of earrings. Mm. Slaves, nice. yeah, you can read Exodus chapter, let's read Exodus 21. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, our pastor referenced this in the communion service yesterday. Mm -hmm. So let's read it again. Exodus 21 from verse 1. It says, um, now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master had given him a wife, and she had borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall uh -huh. plainly say, From this verse 5 now. I love my master, uh -huh. my wife, and my children. I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. forever. Thank you. When the ear is bore through with an awl, a ring will be hung there yeah. mm -hmm. to signify a slave that refused freedom. Mm -hmm. And when we come to where you referenced, Judges 8.20, mm. he said, the Bible says that they, the Judges 8.24, that they were, they, they, they had earrings because they were Ishmaelites. Mm. Ishmael was a son of the bondman, a son of a slave. So these were the origin of earrings, what is now commonly seen as fashion. And when we tell Christian women, don't wear earrings, they begin to argue this, that, this, that. When you know the origin of it, you will know that it is not a godly practice. So it is not proper for Christian women to hang earrings. It had a very, very bad origin. Mm -hmm. It symbolizes something very bad, a slave that refuses freedom. Mm -hmm. It is not, and they, some people will be telling you, ah, in Isaiah, in Jeremiah, mm -hmm. God said the beautified. Mm -hmm. It was a symbolic language. Mm -hmm. You can see clearly. Okay, see Genesis 30, is it 35? 35. Uh -huh. verse Genesis 4. 35. Genesis 35, verse 4. Verse 4, it says, And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings eh? which were in their all ears. All their what? Earrings. And what did Jacob do? And Jacob hid This was when, if you read from verse 1, this was when God told Jacob, Go to, go to Bethel, where you made an altar to me. Mm. So Jacob was going to see God, meet God. Mm. Not only did they give him the strange gods, mm. including earrings, mm. Because it signified a slave that refused freedom. And these are princes, children of God. Mm -hmm. So how can we hang something that makes us slaves? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have um, any spiritual, any positive spiritual significance. Mm -hmm. well, when you read in the book of the prophets, where I say, I beautified you with this, I beautified you with that. Ornament. It was, it, thank you, ornament. It was a figurative language. Mm -hmm. Not that God even allowed Israelites to have earrings. Mm -hmm. No, it was figurative. Anybody you, you, you saw with earring in the Old Testament was a slave that refused freedom. And it was the same culture that the Christians practiced. Mm -hmm. So what we have now are worldly pagan cultures mm -hmm. that are now seen as fashion. Mm -hmm. So please be very careful of that thing you put on. Mm -hmm. And we live in a, we, I mean, we worship, we belong to a very lively fellowship mm -hmm. where God speaks to people. Mm -hmm. Many children of God, daughters of God have been rebuked about that. Because it is very, very, it is a negative, it has a negative spiritual significance. Mm -hmm. Earrings are not for Christians at all, at all. Mm -hmm. God bless you, sir. All right, God bless you, and thank you for sending your question. We have a caller. Shalom and God bless you. This is as a pastor. Shalom, God bless uh, you. I can't hear you. We can't hear you clearly. Please, can you speak a bit louder? Oh, wow, we can't wow, hear wow, you. Wow. Please, you have to call us back um, so that we can hear you better. All right, we have other calls coming in and questions coming in, and we have this from Brother Rudolph from Cameroon. Brother Rudolph says, Good evening, Pastor. Wish to know the difference between a prophet of the Old Testament and prophet of the New Testament. So we'll come back to Brother Rudolph's question. Let's take this call. Shalom and God bless you. This is Ask the Pastor. Okay, we seem to be having a bit of an issue uh, with regards to the call. All right, let's have that question from Brother Rudolph. And Brother Rudolph was asking the difference between a prophet of the Old Testament and then the prophet of the New Testament. Brother Rudolph from okay. Rudolph. Well, even in the Old Testament, there were differences among prophets. Mm -hmm. Moses was a prophet, but you could not compare him with anybody. Mm -hmm. Elijah was a prophet, but you can't compare him with um, some smaller prophets, if I may say. Mm -hmm. Well, the prophets in the Old Testament, most especially what theologians refer to as major prophets, mm -hmm. were prophets that their prophecy became scriptures. Mm. Okay. 
But the prophets in the New Testament, their prophecies are not scripture. The prophets in the New Testament are to edify, exalt, and comfort. They are prophets unto the body. But most, the major prophets in the Old Testament are the ones that we have their words recorded. Their prophecies were scriptures. But that in the New Testament, their prophecies are not scriptural. So when the Bible says in Ephesians 2.20 that we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, the prophets there are not the New Testament prophets. Okay. I've seen this argument before. No, mm -hmm. that the Old Testament prophet that gave us prophecy. Mm -hmm. For instance, okay, see something in Second Peter. Okay. There's Apostle Peter was saying something. Um, Second Peter Second chapter Peter. 2. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Let's read it from verse 19. Second Peter 2, verse 19. Why they promise them liberty, they themselves... No, Second Peter 1, from verse 19. Sorry, please. Okay, Second Peter chapter 1, from verse 19. And it says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, mm -hmm. whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Now, see verse 20 now. Knowing this first, that no prophecy, no prophecy of what? So he was speaking of largely of interpretation. Okay. what they received in the Old Testament. He was speaking largely of that. Uh -huh. How do you know he was speaking of that? For the prophecy, verse 21. Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in So he was time. not even speaking of the apostle scripture. He's speaking of old time. time. Uh -huh. okay. By the will of man. So you see this. So these major prophets, mm -hmm. their prophecies were scripture. Scripture, okay. This major prophet, okay. but that of the New Testament, they only prophesy to individuals, mm -hmm. the community. It is not scripture. Mm -hmm. So when the Bible says we are built and upon the foundation, are prophesying concerning football matches. And uh, now football <laughs> matches. When the Bible says we are built upon the foundation of the apostles, the apostles give us the scripture in the New Testament, mm -hmm. and the prophets, prophets, which prophets that gave us the scripture, scripture in, in the, the Old Testament. Testament. Okay. So that's the difference. Mm. Well, you also had some prophets in the Old Testament that did not give scripture. Okay. That's why I use that language, major oh. prophets. Okay. There were prophets that God actually sent, and their prophecies were scriptures. Mm -hmm. But there were several others mm -hmm. that their prophecies were not scripture. Mm -hmm. There was Elijah. Yeah. When Elijah was going, the Lord told him to anoint a prophet in his room. Mm -hmm. Who was that prophet? Elisha. Elisha. Mm -hmm. But there were other people that they called sons of the prophet, prophet. and they were seeing visions. Yes. Yes. But they were not in the order yeah. of Elijah or Elisha. Oh. So you see it. That's in the Old Testament. That's why we say there is major, truly there is major and there is minor. Okay. All that we saw, there are scriptures and major prophets. Okay. The minor are just those little ones. I saw this, I saw that. Mm. The minor prophets are like our type of the prophets we have in the New Testament okay. now. Okay. Because they don't give scripture. Okay. So that's the difference. Okay. All right. God bless you. Okay. Um, we move on to other questions as they come in through SMS and WhatsApp, and let's have the questions. We just answered this question from Brother Ruta from Cameroon. We have other questions. We move up to those other questions. The phone line is still open for you to call in. And uh, okay, at this point in time, please uh, permit us to this. go on a brief break. And when we come back, they still ask the pastor. Don't touch the dial. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, in verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. But he added again, This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out the devil. They give us power to cast out any devil that will come on any believer. You have no right because the blood of Jesus Christ has set him free. Only those who are connected to the cross, believers connected to the cross, are entitled to go for deliverance. The Bride Assembly Lagos Church presents an annual prayer program, Feed My Family Deliverance. My Family Deliverance Program. It's all about family deliverance. Come and experience a turnaround. Come and stand in the gap for your family. My Family Deliverance Program. Featuring prayer ring, scriptural revelations, praise and worship, prophetic ministration. And I saw, and this one is from Imo State. Yes, I'm from Imo State. Oh, Archie. Yes, I'm from Imo State. And there is another person from 
Delta State. Yes, my husband. And I am asking. Ah, ah, I am now home. I know you before. No, sir. I know your village. No, sir. It's only three buildings. Uh, one, two. Building, two buildings that are. Two, three buildings, but two of them are the most good one. The other one, the small one. Confirm. Just celebrate Jesus. Idiot. If it's the thing that somebody went, I will naked myself and curse him, which yes, you sir. did. Yes, I did. I see in this face you are crying every day at all. Prophetic actions. Every member of the family, the list that you are touching up at clock with, they shall receive freedom. Lord of Jesus Christ, speak for me. Shall we go? Speak for my family. Uh -huh. Open. 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 Power of the spoken word and lots more. Day, Thursday 28th to Saturday 30th, March 2024. Time, 10 p.m. daily. Venue, the Bride Assembly Church Lagos, in the foreclose of the Free Park Estate, off Alakoso Avenue. Ijesha bus stop along Osho the Apapa Expressway, Lagos, Nigeria. Ministry, Brother Moses Ali, Overseer of the Bride Assembly Church Lagos. Loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Your dream is loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Your vision is loose in the name of Jesus Christ. You are loose. Loose them, loose their spiritual life. Loose them, loose them. My family deliverance. My family deliverance program. For inquiries, please contact plus 23480-2529-X026 or call plus 234-70-311-329-55. We also will be streaming live all through our social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and the Bride mobile app. My family deliverance. A change in my family for good. Shalom to all eternal beings worldwide. Father, to call me a prophet. I have taken one church, pastor from one church to my village. I have taken this out to my village. I will say, you really need this one. You only need Christ. Mm. And once you found Christ, you have found deliverance. Hallelujah. Continue. Shalom to the Bride of Christ worldwide. Join us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Nigerian time. All right, welcome back to Ask the Pastor. And yes, it's time for more questions through SMS and WhatsApp and also for you to send in or to call in and ask your questions, biblical questions that is, uh, which is what we're expecting. And so let's have those questions as they come in. And yes, we've answered this question from Sister Glory from Cameroon. And so we can move on to other questions. Remember, if you're joining us on our social media platforms, uh, you can also share, our, um, share the link or share so that other people know that as the pastor is playing right now. And then we have a question from Brother Ibrahim from Bonu State in Nigeria. Bonu, uh, okay, Bonu in Nigeria. Yeah. Say Shalom, Pastor Lubide and Brother Ibuka. My question is, what is the difference between church order and church doctrine? And where actually are the churches today getting it wrong with their doctrines as compared to the scriptures. Thank you, brother. This is from Brother Ibrahim. So different okay. between church order. Yeah, you're yeah, speaking and grammar, and but let's hang the, the let's hang the question as I answer you with, with a little grace. Mm -hmm. um, the church doctrine defines determines the church order. Okay. Order. Order is from law and order. That's um what governs or guides okay. the church, mm -hmm. guides the service. So the church doctrine defines the church order. How you people do things in your church is based on the church doctrine. Mm -hmm. And then the second question says, where actually are churches today getting it wrong with their doctrines as compared to the scriptures? Mm -hmm. Where the churches are getting it wrong is that they teach for doctrines the commandment of men. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe we should answer that call before we we'll okay. come to this. We'll come back to your question. Let's take this call. Shalom and God bless you. This is Ask the Pastor. Hello. Yes, God bless you. You're connected. We'd like to know your name and where you're calling us from. 
I am Sister Peace. I am calling for Enugu. Sister Peace Sister from Peace Enugu. From Enugu. Sister Peace, go on yes. to the question. <coughs> Uh, please, I just want to ask whether do we have any place that we can worship in Enugu? In Enugu State. Uh, yes. I know of some pastors in Enugu. Okay, let's see. I think we have um, we have one pastor possible in Enugu. So. Uh, can we, yes. Yeah, I'll can give you, I'll give you his contact. phone number. Just um, in in two minutes time, you see it on the screen. Zero eight one. Okay. 081-491-92024. I'll take it again. Pastor Possible in Enugu. 081-491-92024. So they will display okay. it on the screen shortly so that you'll be able to copy it. Pastor Possible in Enugu. And then there's another Pastor Joseph. <coughs> There's another pastor, Joseph in Enugu. Let me give you his number also. 090-49-33-19-19. Okay. 090 That's Pastor Joseph. These two pastors are in Enugu. You could call any one of them. And they will let you know where you could worship. God bless you, man. Okay. All right, God bless you, and thank you for okay. calling in yeah. from oh, Thank you. Okay. God bless you. All right, we have yeah. other callers calling in. And, um, okay, we're well, asking a question. Asking yeah, question. so where the churches get it wrong, Brother Ibrahim from Borneo State, yeah. is that they teach for doctrines, the commandment of men. Our doctrines are supposed to be biblical doctrines. In fact, we are not called to have any other doctrine than the word of God. Mm -hmm. What the apostles gave us mm -hmm. should be our doctrine. But where the churches of today get it wrong is that they teach other things for doctrine. For instance, the apostles baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm. The churches of today baptize contrary to that. Mm. They'll tell you baptism is in the title of Father, That's Son, and Holy Ghost. Ghost. Not understanding Matthew 28, 19. Mm. The apostles did not do baptismal class or catechism. Okay. Where for six months oh. or three months, okay. you go to a, you'll be attending a class. Mm. At the end, you write exam. <laughs> So that is a, a commandment of men, not a biblical doctrine. Mm -hmm. So that is where the churches of today missed it. The problem with the church of today is rejecting and refusing the apostolic faith. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. If all of us will hold on to the apostolic faith, mm -hmm. there will be one doctrine, one, one church, one Jesus, mm -hmm. one baptism. We will be truly united if all of us will come back to the apostolic faith. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem with the church of today. Mm -hmm. Everybody is refusing and rejecting the apostolic faith, and they are holding on to other things that are not from the apostles. That's the problem. Okay. So okay. the church doctrine, the doctrine that the church believes, defines or determines the church order. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brother Ibrahim. All right. God bless you, Brother Ibrahim from Bornu, I believe, Meduguri. All right. Let's move on to other questions as they come in, and we have this from Ruben from Ghana. Ruben says, Shalom, my revelated pastor, Lumide. More grace, sir. Please, according to... A message you preached some three weeks ago titled God Changing His Mind, proven in Jeremiah 18, verse 7 to 10, which actually answered a lot of questions. Please, can you reconcile Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11 to Jeremiah 18, verse 7 to 10? Shalom to the bride that, of Christ. That's a Hold good on. question, Brother Ruben. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 55, 11. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11 says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now let's go to that Jeremiah chapter 18. Mm -hmm. And let's take verse... Um, Jeremiah 18, verse 7. Let's take verse 9. Okay, verse 9. 9 and 10. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. So he has spoken a word to do them good. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. If it do evil in my sight that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good. So it's simple. Mm -hmm. If his word will come to pass, mm -hmm. <laughs> don't do evil in his sight. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's as simple. Script, yeah. yeah, a little, yeah. We have to balance scripture. Okay. His word will definitely prosper. Mm -hmm. But here is the same God saying that if... I speak to bless you, mm. and you start doing evil in my sight, mm. I will change my mind. Mm. So it's as simple as that. Mm. For his word to come to pass in your life, you don't change. Mm. 
God is telling us, if you change, you will change. Mm. So as long as you don't change, you don't do evil in his sight, then be rest assured that his word will come to pass. It's simple. Amen. God bless you, sir. All right, God bless you, Brother Ruben. Thank you for sending your message all the way from Ghana. We move on to other questions as they come in, and the phone line is still available for you to call in and ask your questions. And remember for you, if you're joining us just now, and this is your first time, that the line to call is plus 234. 8065928653. And if you want to send in your questions through SMS or WhatsApp, send it to plus two three four eight zero two five two nine eight zero two six. Okay, we move on to other questions and let's have those questions as they come in right now. All right. Remember, we have other people joining us on the social media platforms, and that will be quite interesting to have their questions also as they send in their questions. You know, that sermon that Brother Ruben was referring to, mm. it's caused quite a stare. No, no. God has a breach of promise. Mm -hmm. We saw it in the Bible. Mm. Let's not work with God based on our feelings and emotions. Mm. Let's work with God based on his principle, his mm. word. Mm. We must study the God we, we are serving and know how to work with mm. him. Could we also link that to the scripture okay, saying? We have a call. Maybe okay, we have we'll a call. Tonight. Let's take this call. All right, shalom and God bless you. This is Axe Pastor. Hello, good evening, sir. Yeah, God bless you. You're connected to Axe Pastor. Your name and where you're calling us from? Okay, my name is Pastor Emmanuel. From where? I'm calling from, I'm calling from Ugele Data State. Okay, God bless you, Pastor Emmanuel. Pastor Emmanuel, go on with your question or your suggestion. Contribution. Or contribution, First and right. foremost, I want to appreciate God for the life of our dear Pastor. Amen. Pastor Moses Alu. Amen. He has been a mentor to me. That's right. Even though I have not seen him face to face. Mm. But I'll be following him from, for years. Amen. So it's my prayer that God will continue to strengthen him. Amen and amen. It's time to pray the truth in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. I wish to see him one of these days. Whenever you Hello, come sir. to Lagos, you can see him, sir. <laughs> Hello, sir. We are with you, sir. Whenever you come to Lagos, you can see him. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Uh, because he was the one that really brought me out of this denomination too. That's his, right. His message. Amen. You're welcome, yeah. sir. And by the grace of God, and uh, I'll be a follower of his. Amen. But there is something I want to confirm, which is really troubling me. Okay. Uh, I, have, I, I don't know if I will have time. I have about four questions to ask. Four questions. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you, are, you, are, you are the okay. lucky caller. <laughs> I, I hope you have the data for the time. So let's okay. go. Let's hear you. Okay, sir. Uh, the question number one I want to ask is in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Okay. Verse 11 to 18. So, what's the question? Is it proper for a Christian who is born again to still be called a Gentile? Mm. A Gentile. Uh, <clears throat> it depends on what you mean. Naturally, we are Gentiles. Naturally. Mm. Are we together? Yeah, I'm with you, sir. Yeah, who are Gentiles? Gentiles are any other person human being that is not an Israelite, is a Gentile. Not, yeah, not a Jew. And so that is who we are naturally. But we say spiritually, we are the Israel of God. Okay. So truly, there is nothing wrong with you saying I'm a Gentile. That's who you are naturally now. It's just like me saying, this my beloved brother here is an Igbo man. Mm. So if I cannot call him an Igbo man, or if I cannot call him a Gentile, then I should not call him an Igbo man. It is who you are. You are not naturally an Israelite, but spiritually you are an Israelite. So mm. there's nothing okay. wrong with it. Okay, but if you, if you look at that, uh, First Corinthians verse two. First Corinthians yes. chapter. Verse two. Uh, that you know that you were Gentiles carried away onto these dumb idols, okay. even as you were led. So yeah. there is there is there is a word I want to put there. You were. You say you were. No, no, they complete the statement now. You say you were Gentiles, comma. Not yeah. just were you Gentiles, you were involved in idolatry. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, so it's not just the you were Gentiles. Uh -uh. He says you were Gentiles because every Gentile, in fact, other than, other than the Israelites, every other human being, which are Gentiles, they didn't know the God of Israel. So we were all in idolatry. So now that you know God, that's what yeah. he's saying. There's nothing wrong in saying you are a Gentile naturally. He's not yeah. saying it is wrong that you're, okay, let me get to a scripture that will answer you too. Is he the God of the Jews only, or the God of the Gentiles also? I want to show you a scripture, sir. Yes, sir. Romans, Romans 3, verse 29. Okay. Romans 3, 29. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, yes of, of the, the Gentiles, Gentiles also. also. Okay. So in as much as you say God of Israel, God of Israel, he's also God of the Gentiles because he's the almighty God. Mm. Okay, no, my, 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 my fact is here is this. This we have, we have become one like this. Because Gentiles are people we see as I do what they are. But then when they are not known there. And, and, and I, I made a statement. Let me correct it. Not even all Gentiles were idol worshippers. Do you know that Abraham was a Gentile? It was from Abraham that the nation of Israel came. Okay. Israel was the grandson of Abraham. <laughs> Okay. Yes, now, so Abraham was not an Israelite because before Israel was formed, Abraham was here on earth and he was from Babylon, all the Chaldees. That's what the Bible says. So, yeah, said, Israel, before you come again, sir. I said, before Israel was formed, Abraham yeah. was because Israel was the grandson of Abraham. Yes, yes. So, how are you going to define Abraham? <laughs> He was not an Israelite because Israel was his grandson. Before there was anything like Israel, Gentile. Abraham was a normal human being. So he was a Gentile. All right. Uh, then the question number two. Okay. Is about um, the office, the five foot offices. Okay. Yes, sir. As we copy in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, 7 to 16. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you know, uh, I've had the teaching so many times with the pastor, we said that there is no, not like office of a prophet in our time. I mean, sorry, apostle. apostle. Yeah, the office of an apostle in our time. But if we look, if you go by the scripture very well, uh, the five-fold, to me, I'm, 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 in my opinion, though, the five-fold offices, I see it as the offices that is needed in the church today. In the sense that if these people are not complete in the church, the church will be dwarfed, will be suffering in a path. So I don't know how you can convince okay. me to say that that office does, not, does no longer exist in our time. Pa pastor Emmanuel, okay. you are a very sincere pastor, and I love how you are, you are quite articulated with the scriptures. <laughs> More grace, sir. I hope to also meet you so that I can learn also a few things from you too. Um, what is the work of an apostle, sir, if I may ask? Okay, uh, apostle actually are people who are called and sent by the Lord Jesus Christ. Who are called? Uh, is a pastor uh, not called and sent by the Lord Jesus? Yes. A pastor, a pastor is part of the office. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being specific now. Yeah. What is the work of an apostle? The work of an apostle. Yes, sir. I think the apostle, in general terms, is somebody who is called, commissioned, and given authority by the Lord God Christ to represent him, spreading the gospel, establishing authority also. Mm. To, to represent him in spreading the gospel, establishing of churches. churches. But yes, sir. mind you, sir, everyone in the fivefold is called and commissioned. Yes, I know. Everyone in the fivefold is representing Jesus. And then the evangelists are the ones that go out, evangelize, and start churches. Yeah. Are we together, sir? Okay, sir. So the work of an apostle is, is uh, much more than that. When you define an apostle like that, you make it seem as if the other members of the fivefold are not commissioned. Everyone is commissioned. Yeah, everyone is commissioned. You're a yeah. pastor. You, you, have, you have your commission story. 
If I ask yes, you now, you tell me an experience you had in the spirit where God told you to go and preach. I have my own. Yes, sir. So if I come out and say I am commissioned and God sent me to do what I'm doing, I'm not wrong because he did. <laughs> so that is not the work of an apostle. All right. That is not the office of an apostle. Okay, then. What, what is the office then? Let me hear from you. The office of the apostle is to lay the foundation of the New Testament church, to set the church in order. And they already did through their epistles. Okay. Okay, now. Yesterday, let me give you an, an analysis. Yesterday, our pastor brought this out in his sermon. It was okay. Moses that received instruction concerning the ark and built the ark, right? Yes, sir. Inside that ark, there were the Ten Commandments that God gave Moses, right? Yes, sir. But how was the ark carried? The ark yes. was carried by four Levites on their shoulders, four yes. priests. It must be four on their shoulders. Do you see a type there, yes, sir? Yes, I'm So the work of the apostles have been done. That is what we have as the New Testament order. The New Testament, that is the work of the apostles. They gave okay, us, sir. it is the apostles that revealed Jesus. I hope you know, sir, that Jesus didn't write any scripture. Of course. Everything we know about the Lord Jesus was mm. given to us by the apostles. So they have done their work. The other members of the fivefold ministry are to continue with the work of the apostles to make sure that any ministry we do must follow the pattern of the apostles. Just like when Moses received the law, gave them all the commandments, Moses died before they entered the promised land. Any other prophet that came up under the Old Testament was only to point the people back to the work of Moses. That is the work of the apostles. That is the apostolic ministry. Okay. But if I could say that the apostles in general said, people that saw people for whom. People that, that, sorry, sir, I didn't hear you. People that saw who got purple in the church today. Exactly. In the sense that they did not seem to have the spiritual apostolic leader. Do you know that in a way, Spreading of the gospel is No, no, no. In fact, the person that is in ch the people, the office in charge of spreading the gospel has always yeah. been the evangelical office. Uh, they, yes, exactly. Like, look, okay, look, now. look at Acts chapter 8. It okay. was Philip that went Philip. to Samaria and Philip. won Samaria to the Lord. And Philip was an evangelist. Philip was an evangelist, not an apostle. Yeah. But there's something that I found there in that place to go to. Then Peter and John came and baptized them in the Holy Ghost. Very good. When it was time for them to receive the Holy Ghost, so are you saying are you saying that we can't receive the Holy Ghost except an apostle is there? No, it simply means they only gave Philip the right hand of fellowship, nothing more. Okay. They only gave Philip the right hand of fellowship. There's something I discovered. I discovered that somebody may have the Holy Spirit, but he may not be able to pray for somebody else to receive the Holy Spirit, except those who are actually calling to their No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Which scripture do you use to judge that at all? I, I use the one in Spirit. No, no, no. You are, you are isolating an event. I'm answering you. I said, Philip, they only gave, it was a backup they gave Philip, not okay. more. Not that Philip could not. Okay, what about the others that went to different places? That we don't have their records. And there's no record of the apostles traveling to meet them anywhere. So are we going to say that those, uh, those um, evangelists that ran away from Jerusalem after they killed Stephen and went to preach the gospel everywhere? So from that, from your, your understanding, sir, that means that wherever they went to, and it is not recorded that the apostles went there to join them. That means the people there did not receive the Holy Ghost. No. It was just a backup they gave Philip. It was a right hand of fellowship. Nothing more. Not that you can't receive. We received the Holy Ghost in this ministry under our pastor. 
And he is a pastor, not an apostle. <laughs> yes, sir, Pastor Emmanuel. Pastor Moses is a pastor, not an apostle. Yes. But I'm seeing him having the gift of an, of an apostle. <laughs> okay, in what way? Tell me, sir, in what way? The apostle will say most times. In what they way? Are, they are prayed in the five fold of No, no, he has taught us that. It uh, is the pastor, in fact, it is the teacher of God's word that operates more in the fivefold. Why? Because he must have a measure of all these gifts and all these manifestations so that he can teach it properly to the people. And that is what Pastor Moses is doing. Okay. That's not the work of an apostle. Okay. That's not the work right. of an apostle. All right. We are, we are, we are, we are telling you. <laughs> Pastor Emmanuel, sir, were you in our, have you attended our minister's conference before? No, no, I haven't. Okay. Because all these questions were properly answered, minister to minister. Uh, okay. our, our minister's conference is coming up in June, mm. the month of June. Please, sir, we would love to see you. June, uh, let me get the date. June, um, that's the same week of our... That's our June, June 9th to yeah. June 12th. So the minister's conference is coming up June 9th <laughs> to June 12th. 9th to 12th of June, here in Lagos. 9th to 12th of June, here in Lagos. And yeah, registration I is free, feeding is free. Accommodation is free. Please, okay. sir. It is, it is advertised in writing. Yes. Be be, 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 before, before the end of the week, the advert will begin. Yeah, right here in Lagos, we'll be yeah. having the, the minister's conference in the month of June so that you can be a part of it. We okay, understand sir. you. Before we, before we also add this understanding, all yeah. of us refer to Pastor Moses as, as an apostle. In fact, we are saying that he's just trying to be humble. But when we <laughs> come down to earth, the work of the apostles was to lay the foundation of the church, to set the church in order. And they have yeah. by the scriptures that we have. Yeah. Any other thing we are doing, we are only building on the work of the apostles. Anybody that says he's an apostle today, that means the person is bringing a new scripture to add to the one we already received. And we can see it in what the apostles are doing. Pastor Emmanuel, read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Let's settle it with this scripture. Ephesians 2, 20. Yes, sir. Okay. What does it say? Having been built for the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Can you see it, sir? Upon which, upon which which foundation are we built? We built on the foundation of the prophets. The Old Testament the prophets and the prophets. The, the Old Testament, Testament prophets prophet. that gave us the Old Testament, that gave us the scriptures, and mm. The apostles of the New Testament that give us the New Testament scriptures. So they, their work has long begun. They have left the scene. Mm. Those prophets gave us the Old Testament. The apostles gave us the New. Upon this foundation, the church is built. Yes. So there is no apostle anymore today, except they are writing another book. There's no apostle anymore today. All right, so we don't need to add you. God bless you, sir. <laughs> yeah. The next question. Yes, sir. We are with you. Uh, is what is truly confusing to me? There was a word in this one time, which I lost. You were telling Pastor Moses that it is time for us to come out from the boat. Okay. Yes, sir. True, sir. So that you, that you know I'm calling people to see me. <laughs> no grace, sir. Yeah. So the, you know, the speaking of the you know, Williams and the others, there are a lot of things. I know that Moses came out and he started putting some strip of which some of the entire ministers are not happy with him. Very true, sir. Yeah. So now, there is something that is still confusing. When they are speaking, it, most times it will be confusing. And what is it? The aspect of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that okay. Of now. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking of Trinity. Yes. I'm talking of the person of Jesus Christ and God. Yes, sir. Who is the, uh, the Almighty God? So some people will tell you that it is the Almighty God that come of Jesus, mm -hmm. and then he has returned back again to take the position of the Almighty God. Okay. So that means. 
confusing. Uh, have you heard our, our own teaching about the God mm -hmm. in this ministry? I've listened to him. You've listened to I Pastor don't, Moses? I don't, I don't know if there's the London one. Have you listened to Pastor Moses' teaching on the God Dead? The recent one. Any people about the old one? No, old one. Who is Jesus mm -hmm. and other summons like that? Mm. Yeah. No. No, I don't think uh, no. Listen, to, listen to who is Jesus. It's an old sermon, more than 13 years ago, Seth. Mm. Who is oh. Jesus? Part one, part two. He has okay. answered the question concerning the Godhead. He is true. In the end time message cycle, they are still divided over the Godhead. Mm. There are some people okay. that tell you that Jesus was not divine from the birth. Mm. That it was at the river Jordan that Jesus became divine. Mm. Why another <laughs> set will tell you that no, he was divine from birth. Yes. So yes, we have all this confusion. But I think okay. if you listen to what Pastor Moses taught, who is Jesus, he makes it clear very well. Okay, can you please summarize this for me? I should summarize it for you. you can okay. It. Jesus, okay. it depends on from what angle you are looking at him from. Okay. Yes. Jesus is both the son of God in the sense that he was begotten by God. Yes. He was begotten by God in the spirit. Now, okay. physically speaking, mm. you are made up of 46 chromosomes. That's 23 from your father. Is that right, Brebuka? Yeah, 23 true. from your mm. mother. Mm. In the case of Jesus, all the chromosomes are from God. <laughs> of course. Yes. So can you see that Jesus was divine in that, in that way? He's divine. Yes, because if not, you'll be saying that God had um, sexual intercourse with Mary. No. Mary only provided the body. Of course. The life in that body came from God himself. So that's yes, divinity. That was why when Jesus was born, the angels worshipped. The, the, the wise men were led by an angel to him. They worshipped him because he was born. That nature, that life in him was the life of God. But that that was born was called the son of God because God, number one, God, you cannot quantify God. God has no size, no shape. So that divine being, the angel told Mary, that only thing that shall be born, that's divine, that's divinity. That divine being is called the son of God because he's not God in his fullness. So it's mm. the son of God that grew up. It's the son of God that was going to meet Mary. Mommy, 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 mommy. It's the son yeah. of God that went to the temple in um, Luke chapter 2 mm. that was questioning yeah. the doctors yeah. in the yeah. temple. Mm. He was okay. the son of God, yet divine. But this son of God at the river Jordan, mm. this great spirit, mm. the fullness of God incarnated him. Mm -hmm. The spirit incarnated him in full. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. when his messianic ministry began. Mm -hmm. That's when um, Colossians 2 verse 9 can be fulfilled, that the fullness mm -hmm. of the body dwelleth mm -hmm. in him mm -hmm. bodily. Mm -hmm. yes. So looking at Jesus, you must, look, you must know from what angle you are looking at, at him from. He's the son mm -hmm. of God because he was born of God. He had the mm -hmm. life of God in him. And then mm. this same son of God was incarnated with the full spirit of God at the river mm. Jordan because mm. he was also the temple of God. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then I, one good analysis that Pastor Moses taught us was um, the mountain that was cut out without ants mm -hmm. in Daniel chapter 2. Mm. If it. the big mountain is God and a stone was cut oh, out, mm. that is the son of God. Mm. So listen to the sermon and you will get a very clear picture. That's the summary I can do yet now. All right. So if I if I say that uh, Jesus is the form of God, through whom we get access to God, the Almighty God, I think I'm not out of context. You are not out of context. Every greeting of Apostle Paul, you will say from yeah. God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Very good. So every you are not out of context. Every greeting of Apostle Paul, in fact. You would think he's speaking of two people, two different personalities. Mm -hmm. If you don't, that's why some, that, see, there's a reason why Trinity is so difficult to live. And we that are shouting, no Trinity, no Trinity. Some of us don't even present the proper picture of the Godhead. Some of us talk no Trinity, but we don't, have, we don't uh, present the scriptures properly for the Trinitarians to understand that there's no Trinity. So you are not wrong when you say he's the son of God. It's the temple of God. Now, the Bible says God was in Christ, reconciling mm. the world to himself. Yeah, one of the things that really, that really convinced me is that book of John, I think it's John chapter 17. 
if you read that verse one down to um, come in, where Jesus Christ was making that prayer, he says something that is very striking there in verse five. In verse five. Yes. Now, Father, glorify me with the glory that I had with thee. No. Mm -hmm. From what you are saying now, you are saying that Jesus' prayer existed before he was born? Yes. No, 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 no. Yeah, you two, you are going into Trinity. Jesus did not pray exist. I just mentioned, I said he was born of God in the womb of Mary. He didn't pray exist. Where was he glorified? He was glorified in the mind of the Father. Don't forget that the Bible says that Christ was crucified before the foundation of the world. Do you remember that scripture, sir? Yes, sir. If Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world, that means he was glorified before the foundation of the world. That is the meaning of what he was saying, that Father, glorify me with the glory I had with thee. With you. Yes, he's speaking of in him, in his mind. The glory I had with you before the world was. Because the Bible says that he was crucified before the world was. The Bible says even we, our names were written in the book of life before the foundation of the world. So if I come and say, Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world was, mm. I am not wrong because it says my name was written before the foundation of the world. Mm. So yes, not sir. that Jesus pre-existed, but in the mind of God, God had concluded everything. Mm. So Jesus was saying, Father, what you thought about me before you started creating even the earth, that thought that you had before the foundation of the world, bring it mm. to manifestation. Okay. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 12 that for the glory that was ahead of him, mm. he endured the cross. Mm. So now he's praying, I am going to the cross. That glory that I had with you when I was crucified in your mind, Father, glorify me with it now. And that's the glory he has received when the Bible says that God has given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, everything in heaven, on earth, and under the earth should bow. Mm. That is the glorification. It was settled in the mind of God even before Jesus was born. Okay. But when he resurrected, it was manifested. Mm. Okay. All right. There are a lot of people that really point to the fact that uh, Jesus is like, uh, he existed. No, no. God. It is a misunderstanding of scripture. He did not exist before the foundation, before he was born. Before, he, before the angel met Mary, Jesus didn't exist at all. He only existed in the mind of God, in the plan of God. Uh, what was the one of Genesis when God was speaking? God was, was talking, talking. God was talking to his angelic family, mm -hmm. where he said, "Let us make man in our image." Mm -hmm. That is why the Bible says that man is a little lower than the angels in, Gen in, in Psalm eight, that thou was made man a little lower than the angels. Mm -hmm. So God was talking to his angelic family, not God and Jesus talking. It was God and his angels. If you read Job chapter 37, is it 37 or 38? You could see where the Bible said that when he laid the foundation of the earth, the morning stars sang for joy. Mm. So it was God and his angelic family speaking. Wow. It's okay. <laughs> Pastor uh, Emmanuel. Thank you. Uh, thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, God bless you, Pastor Emmanuel. Thank you for calling in all the way from Delta State, Nigeria. All right, we have questions coming in and through SMS, and this is from Maria Noel from Cameroon. says, good evening, Pastor. Please, is it bad for a Christian to put product, like relaxer, on her hair? The motive, mm. I'm not going to say yes or no. The motive is what God looks at. I don't know if there's any good motive for relaxer, yes. but maybe, you know, women have issues. Mm. I know of many sisters that, in fact, even my wife, only God knows how many things she uses on her hair. Today you use turmeric, tomorrow you use this one, tomorrow. I've seen some that use onions. I don't, so I don't know the mo motive. You women have a lot of issues with your hair that you need to treat, but not for fashion. Mm. The motive is what matters, but not fashion. Mm -hmm. Because I remember before I became a Christian, I used to relax my hair too. As a man, relax it, pan me too. So not for fashion, it's the motive that God looks at. Okay, question two from um, Noel, uh, Maria Noel from Cameroon says, what does it mean when someone tells you you have the spirit of John the Baptist? You have the spirit of John, John the, the Baptist. Baptist. Ah, 
<laughs> it's the spirit of Jesus that you should have, not the spirit of John the Baptist. Uh, if you have the spirit the of John the Baptist in this generation, force. they will think you are insane. No. You will leave civilization and go to the wilderness using animal skin as clothes. Yeah. And your food is locust. And That's a grasshopper and, and wild honey. <laughs> no, please don't have the spirit of John the Baptist too. <laughs> Nobody has the spirit of John the Baptist in this generation. The spirit we have is the spirit of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you have the spirit of John the Baptist, you'll be seen as an insane person. But if you say, oh, your character, mm -hmm. uh, you are behaving like John the Baptist in the sense that you are not compromising, okay. you are bold to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Like John the Baptist yeah, rebuked Herod. Yes. Yeah, if that's what you mean, fine. But let's not use that language, yes. spirit. Yes. The spirit we should have is the spirit of Christ. <laughs> Let's be careful with all these Pentecostals. When one say Apostle Paul came to me, Apostle this one came to me, the elders came to me, that the ones that use this language, you have the spirit of this. Uh -uh. The spirit that we are to get, have, is the spirit of Christ, Amen. not the spirit of John the Baptist Amen. at all. Amen. God bless you. So have the spirit of Christ, not the spirit of John the Baptist. <coughs> we have this question from Brother Caleb Olamileko from Ikiti State. Says, my question is, is it right for believers to celebrate birthday party? Uh, there was one birthday party that was celebrated in the Bible. <laughs> eh? When <laughs> the, the, the angels were celebrating the birth of the Lord, okay. of the Lord Jesus. Okay. Eh? Where we have, um, there are the angels sing. The Bible said that the angels were celebrating, mm. celebrating Jesus. Let's read from verse 8. It's not naming ceremony, it's birth of Jesus. <laughs> well, that's on the light mood. Excuse me. It's not wrong to celebrate your birthday. Mm. The only thing is do it in the godly way. Mm. We'll not do it like the world. Mm. It's not wrong to celebrate your birthday. Mm. I know a lot of over-righteous people. This, this particular question is a very, very controversial yeah, one. Works, yeah. But it is over-righteousness, over-sabi. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They will tell you, the only birthday that was celebrated was the birthday of John and Herod. Herod. Mm -hmm. John, Herod, and Pharaoh. No, Herod and Pharaoh. Herod. And that when they celebrated the birthday, they killed people. Mm -hmm. The purpose for Herod's celebration and Pharaoh's celebration was not to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. That it happened that day doesn't link it to the birthday. He has been celebrating birthday. Was it recorded the, every birthday they kill people? Mm. So you see how people read scriptures. Mm. No, that's not the meaning. Nothing is wrong. On your day of birth, give thanks to God. Mm. Nothing is wrong on how you want to celebrate. Mm. Last year, a group of brethren surprised me and celebrated me. I mm. felt so loved. Mm. Every birthday, many of us here, every, every January, when is our daddy's birthday mm. in the church here? Many of us are eager to celebrate him because we see it as an avenue to tell him yeah. thank you. Yeah. Apart from his spiritual impute in our lives, mm. many of us that benefit from him materially and physically, yeah. we see that as an avenue to celebrate yes. him and tell him thank you. Yeah. Until this year, he stood and said, nobody should celebrate yeah. him. <laughs> then anybody that wants to celebrate him, celebrate him privately, yeah. personally. Yeah. Because people would have gathered and celebrated yeah. him. Yeah. That's what we do. So it's not wrong to celebrate your birthday, but do it in a godly way. Mm. You won't celebrate it like the world. Sure. If, if it is wrong to celebrate birthday, then Christians should not do anything like naming. Mm. Your wedding self should not be celebration. Mm. Let's just come, everybody bone face on your wedding day. No, no celebration at all. It should be a day of sadness. Mm. No, there is nothing wrong with celebrating your birthday. It is a reason to be thankful. Acknowledge God in it. If you have things, do it. The Lord Jesus said, when you make a feast, mm. that means you can do a feast as a child of God. Mm. That's Luke um, 14, if I'm not mistaken. The only thing he said, call the maimed, call the beggars, call mm. this. So the only thing we'll do is we will do it the Christian way. Mm. Nothing is wrong with birthday celebration. Thank you, sir. All right, God bless you. Thank you for sending in your questions. We have more questions coming in. Phone line still open. And this is good evening, sir. My name is Sister Agatha Mwabweze. My question is, does the presence of a child with dreadlock, like Dada, as it's called in Nigerian local dialect, is it a threat to other children in a school organization? If no, <laughs> what scripture explains this? You asked the school organization, sir. I thought you were going to say church. It's a sister. It's a school. Okay, it's a sister. sister. Please ask the school. Ask the organization now, not us. <laughs> Your question is, is it a... A threat to the no, children? No, the organization knows what is a threat to them and what is not a threat okay. to them. There's no... Why are we bringing scripture into that? You ask the organization. 
They will tell you if they allow it or not. Mm -hmm. tell spiritually, you. does it have? Let her ask. Okay. Not you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let okay. her ask. Okay, God bless you, Sister Agatha. Spiritually, mm -hmm. we know that spiritually speaking, mm -hmm. especially in a spiritual church like Bar Assembly, mm -hmm. we know that we have prophets and they see things. Mm -hmm. Because that, that, that thing, many a times that I know to the limit of my knowledge, there's always a spiritual dimension to it. Okay. Yes, especially from the white garment, garment church, church and things and like yeah. that. So, and I've been in the church where, in the spirits, even our daddy has picked it several times, and by instruction from the Lord. Mm. But that's a specific case. I can't yes. make it a doctrine. Okay. Okay. By instruction from the Lord, I've seen cases where say, go and cut the air. Mm. The only doctrine I can bring is where the Bible says that if a man have long hair, it is a shame okay. to him. Mm. Yeah. So if it is a shame for a man to have long hair, and you cut it. <laughs> okay, God bless you. Well, God the bless lady, you. the sister, she asks organization. Uh, okay, okay, sister Agatha, you have your answer there. All right, we'll move on to other questions. And uh, we have this question from Sister Rita from Worry Delta State. She says, Good evening, Pastor, and shalom to the bride of Christ. And um, question one I wish you to know if a pastor or apostle pastoring a church can become a king of his community. Wonderful. If okay. Pastor Ibuka tomorrow can become the AZ <laughs> in Anambra State. When you are called to the fivefold ministry, you are called above any other um, governmental or um, royal office, if I may call it. Mm. No, it's wrong because you are the custodian of the culture of your people. Okay. You are the custodian of the culture of your people. Yeah. And you're a pastor. Mm. So how are you going to reconcile your culture? Mm that is usually um, against, against Christianity, Christian. idolatrous. Okay. How will you reconcile an idolatrous custom mm -hmm. with the Bible? Mm -hmm. You sit on the throne, see the owner of Oshu. Mm -hmm. He was made to marry many wives. I think he has up to 13 now, if I'm not mistaken. And counting. It and counting. That likely. is the demand mm -hmm. of that culture mm -hmm. because of the throne he's sitting on. Sitting on yeah. Before he ascended the throne, there was nothing like that. Yeah. So let's, um, we know it is happening in this generation, but you cannot hold on to the customs of the people. Mm. If not, you will even divide the society. <laughs> because if you say, no, you're a Christian, mm. you're a Christian, it must be, first win the, make sure that Christianity is the only society in that, mm. in that, is the only religion in that society, your version of Christianity, mm. is the only religion in that society. Mm. Everybody is a Christian. And when you go to the throne, there's no form of, Costume or culture that is against, mm -hmm. and if you can, if you can have such a society, then feel free and practice what you want to practice. Yes. But it is, it is. I, it's to my knowledge, I don't even think I've seen. To mm -hmm. say rare is even an understatement. Mm -hmm. But I stand to be corrected anyway. As little as I know, I know that you cannot be the king of your community and be a pastor, there will be conflict of interest. Uh, could we, even if we were to look at it from the angle of the Bible, I do know in, um, in the Old Testament um, era that God had his reasons for separating the Levitical office of the office king and the, oh, the God bless you, sir. Yes, minister. another very good input. Thank you for that input. Mm -hmm. Because that office is demanding. Mm -hmm. Those two offices are two, it's just like saying you are president and you are pastor. Where will mm -hmm. you have time? <laughs> The office of the president or governor is too demanding. Yeah. When will you have time to yeah. pastor, pastor your, your ship? Very, very good input. Thank you for that, Brebuka. Because those offices are demanding. Mm. And then, even in the Old Testament, that society was formed by God. God. It is God's own society. Mm. When the new, we don't, I don't see any example of that yes. in the New Testament. All right. All right, God bless you. Thank you for sending your question. Yeah, the second question. We have a second question, okay, from Sister Rita eh? from Worry. says, is it scriptural? To feed angels in the church. Angels to feed angels. In the church. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> angels in human form or angels in spiritual form? <laughs> Sarita, your, your question <laughs> asked me a little about eh? <laughs> to feed angels. When did angels start eating physical your food? food in the church. <laughs> I don't know where all these things are. In this generation, there's nothing we will not see in the name of Christianity. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody, there's a prophet we saw one time that said, bribe my angel. Mm -hmm. I was talking about people bringing up, he said, bribe my angel. <laughs> so I will also ask, is it right to bribe angels in the church? <laughs> I don't, I, I can't, you know, I don't even know how to answer you. There's no such, um, there's no such instance. Mm. But you know, 
There's something about most especially the Pentecostals. Okay. The Bible said that Abraham met with God. Okay. God, like three men day. appeared okay, to God. The three men, okay. God and two angels. Yes. And Abraham fed, fed them. them yeah. So a pastor came and said he drank tea with God. God drank tea. Okay. I don't know if you it was <laughs> it was um, trending, I think last month or so, a big pastor, pastor. in this country mm. said that him and God were drinking tea together. <laughs> Make a no talk. <laughs> Let it just be that way. Okay. Make a no talk. Okay. Because, in fact, what do you want to say? Eh? <laughs> Anything goes in the name of Christianity today. Angels don't eat physical food. Angels don't eat rice and beans. Angels are not natural. They are spiritual beings. Mm. So they don't need the food you eat. So you can't feed them. Mm. You can't feed angels. Let nobody bamboozle you with big grammar and anointing and say, mm -hmm. we want to feed angels today. Mm -hmm. Everybody bring money. money. We'll cook special food for the angels. Any pastor that does that wants to dupe you, collect money from you. Angels don't eat physical food. They don't wear physical clothes. They are spirits. They can take any form to appear to you. An angel can appear as a light. An angel can appear as a man. Mm -hmm. An angel can take the appearance of a woman. An angel can take the appearance of a bird. Mm -hmm. You see in the spirit, you see a mighty eagle has come. Mm -hmm. An angel can take, any, they are not human beings, they are spiritual beings mm -hmm. that can appear with, in any form mm -hmm. to pass the message they are sent mm -hmm. to pass. Mm -hmm. Angels don't eat rice and beans, please. Okay. All right, God bless you. We have a call. Let's um, have the caller. Shalom and God bless you. This is Ask the Pastor. You're connected to Ask the Pastor, your name and where you're calling us from? Yeah, good evening, Pastor. Good evening, sir. God bless you, sir. And you too, sir. Yeah, I want, I want, uh, my name is God bless you. My name is Bless Loto, calling from uh, Ogun State. We are blessing from Ogun State. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to ask to, uh, about uh, this uh, very of the thing that uh, you people say uh, over right church. I want to know why did, why did Jesus celebrate his baby? Why did the apostles celebrate their baby? I knew that this was going to come, <laughs> and that was why I used the statement, because now the question is, when did Jesus celebrate his birthday? When did Jesus, is he everything that the Lord Jesus did that was recorded in the Bible? Please, sir, uh, where the did Jesus... Where did Jesus take his bath in the Bible? Where did Jesus brush his teeth in the Bible? Now, the question is, the question is, what scripture is against birthday celebration? That is what we should be talking about. Uh, sir, sir, you people are being grateful. I don't know if you understand. You people, I have blessed a lot of people. But this blessing of Christian, I have seen a lot of people as a result of blessing. It's proving Christian. So that is why... Sir, I'm brother blessing, sir. Brother blessing, sir. which scripture uh, says you should not celebrate your birthday? Let me have it, please. <coughs> I just see that in the early of where... Uh, uh, no, no, no. I'm asking you. You said we should not. Which scripture says we should not? That is what I'm asking you, sir. So it is a commandment of man. It is not an instruction from God. Are you with me, sir? It is your own, it is your own decision. So please, sir, let me ask you a question, sir. On your birthday, what do you usually, what do you do? Anytime it falls on your birthday, what do you do? Well, well I need that I think you so That's all you do. Okay, yes, so, uh, your, hold on, sir, please, sir, let me ask you, sir. So, your, are you married, sir? Yes, I'm married. You have a family. So, on your I birthday, have... they don't cook special yes. food, say it's daddy's birthday, and rejoice with you? Honestly, you think. I don't do that. Okay. Uh, if I do it, if I do it, have I sinned? Mm. Hey, brother, blessing. I'm hearing you, sir. If I do it, if my wife 
My family decides that it is my birthday. They baked a cake for me. They surprised me. They cooked special food on my birthday. Have I sinned? Have I sinned if I do that? No, no, no. That's what we are saying. It is how you celebrate that matters, not you okay. celebrating. Okay, because uh, it's uh, that of a thing. No, no. See, the thing is, I, I, I will make that statement again. Many a times it is our over-righteousness. It is what you do. I used an example. I said, Pastor Moses is a father to many of us in this place. And his birthday comes, and we decide to celebrate him. Have we committed sin? No, 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 no. If I decide to celebrate my father, I call on my siblings. I say, oh, it's our father's birthday. Please, everybody, come to the house. You bring cake. You bring this wine. We must go and make daddy happy today. Have we sinned? No. So it is how you celebrate that matters, not okay, the okay, celebrating. Okay. That is what we are saying. Okay, no problem. That's why I said, uh, as a Christian, you don't celebrate yeah. like the world. But there is nothing wrong. Okay, see what the Lord Jesus said in Luke chapter 14. Verse, let's read it from verse 7. Luke 14, verse 7 says, and he puts Okay, that one is talking of a wedding. Okay. Hold on. Let's go to verse. Oh, there's, there's a particular one talking about a feast. Verse 12. Luke 14, verse 12. Verse 12. Then said he also to him that bade him, when thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends. So what are you doing? You are celebrating now. Mm -hmm. You are having a party. Mm -hmm. So what did he say? Nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also be thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou make it a feast, when you make a feast, when you throw a party, call the poor, call the, poor, the, the poor. maimed, uh -huh. the lame, Why? the blind, that thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. So that's it. That's how Christians should celebrate. The Lord is not saying you should not celebrate. He's telling you that if you celebrate, do it in a way where you have eternal blessings. Call people that are hungry, call people that are poor. Celebrate to them so that God will pay you back. If you call your rich friends, mm -hmm. nothing is wrong, oh but don't expect reward back from God. That was what the Lord was teaching us. Not that we should not celebrate anything. Is Brad Blessing still online with us? Shall mm -hmm. I think we've lost this call. Okay, since we lost the call. Oh. Okay, Brad. So I, 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 I said that I made that statement over righteous yeah. because mm -hmm. I know I was going to expect some feedback from some people. There is nothing wrong. Christians, mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong with birthday celebration. Mm -hmm. If there is anything wrong with birthday, then wedding should not be celebrated. Mm -hmm. Anniversary. Anniversary should not be celebrated. What else? Naming, Naming should, should not be celebrated. Done. There's nothing wrong with birthday celebration. It is how you celebrate that matters, mm -hmm. not, okay, what, uh, not the call, celebration and this itself. This will be the last call for today. Shalom and God bless you. This is Ask the Pastor. Your name and where you are calling us from. Hello, my name is Joy Okay, Sister Joy, from where? Sister Joy from Adamawa State, Mubi. Adamawa State. God bless you. Please go on with your question. Okay, um, my question is, yesterday, there was something that Pastor Lumide said. Okay. During the, his hearing announcement. Okay. So he was given a testimony um, of the encounter he had after attending a prayer band. Last Monday, yeah? Yes. Go, on. Go ahead, Sister Joy. So he said that after the prayer band, he retired back to his house. So he had an encounter yeah. where an angel was praying for him. Angels, yeah. So, yes, when angels were praying for him, so I was like, I was surprised. Does angels pray? <laughs> angels can pray for you. They can bless you. That's the meaning of that praying for you. Don't forget that prayer is to ask God to do something. When we said that Jacob met with God in Genesis, it was an angel he wrestled with now, not with God. And it was the angel that blessed him. Hope you know. Same thing with Gideon. It was an angel that appeared to Gideon and blessed him and gave him instructions. So it was an experience I had. It wasn't a dream. It was so vivid and real. I turned because I was tired. And I saw a group of people in the office. One in particular, I saw his face. It looked familiar, but... So it was much taller than the person. In fact, it looked familiar, but it was not the person. And they held my leg. He, in particular, held my leg and were praying for me. They were blessing me. So 
is what I saw. Uh, I think uh, our sister in um, Abuja, Sister Margaret Alu, she had a similar experience. She was sleeping, and an angel came, was praying for her, held her two legs. When she opened her eyes, she saw the hands holding her legs. So she closed her eyes and kept saying amen. And the angel kept praying for her. So it is a spiritual experience. It can happen. It is, it is a blessing. The angel was actually blessing, if I may say. Wow, OK. <laughs> OK, God bless you, Sister Joy. Joy, OK. Let me just take one more call. I know I said Sister Joy's call will be the last call. All right, shalom and God bless you. This is as the pastor, your name, and where you're calling us from. I'm calling from, I'm calling from other states. From Abia State, your name, please. Yeah, Okoya Abia State. Okay, your name is Rada Okoya from Abia State. Yes. Okay, please reduce the volume of that TV set so that we can hear you clearly. Speak to us through the phone and we'll answer you okay, through the yes. phone. All right, let's hear your uh, question. All right. My question is about five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Talk to us through okay. your phone, sir. Hello? We Talk to us you. through your phone. Uh, we can hear you. My question is about tithe. Okay. As I study about tithing, and I discovered that the tithing is made for only for the children of Israel, that God punished them because of their uh, evil deeds and put the, the blessing upon the children of uh, God. Talk to us through your phone, sir. Hello? We can hear you. Talk to us through your yes, phone. Okay. Don't listen to yes, your TV. I'm Talk to us through your phone. For them, I'm blessed the Levi to be in position that they will be paying time to Levi. But now, I discover that we are still paying time. Like Exodus 19, verse 8, verse 5 to 8. And Exodus 32, 1 to end, and numbers 18, 1 to 7. Okay, so what's your and question, sir? 18, what's your question, sir? Now, the reason I see that all these are uh, instructions given to Israel, and they should be paying tight to the Levi. And then you say, so a what is your question, sir? Yes. So what's your question, sir? So why are we still paying tax? OK. Thank you, sir. Firstly, your analysis concerning the tax paying is not accurate. Sure. Tax was not given as a punishment to the Israelites. No, 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 no. Right. If not, God punished Abraham. God punished Isaac. God punished Jacob. All right. It was not, no. And tight is before the law. Mm. Can I ask you a question, sir? Yes. Under the New Testament church is under which priesthood? Under Jesus Christ. Under which priesthood? Yes, Jesus is the high priest. Under which priesthood? Are you with us, sir? Are you with us, sir? Um, uh, yes, yes. Okay, let me help you. We are under the priesthood of Melchizedek. You know, do you yes. know that? Yes. We are what? Under the priesthood of Melchizedek. Yes. Yes. Okay, you are familiar with that? Yes. So did Melchizedek receive tithes? Melchizedek paid tithes. No. And he received tithes from, from Abraham. Thank you. And we are still under the priesthood of Melchizedek. Is that right? Yes. So, if he received tithes from Abraham, will he not receive tithes from us? He will. Thank you, sir. The case closed. That is why we pay tithes. Okay. God bless you, sir. All right. God bless you, brother Okoya from Abia State, Nigeria. We call it a day here. 
Uh, such an interesting question tight, tight on tight payment. Thank payment. you, thank you, thank you for calling it a day because <laughs> I cannot answer questions. It's usually sometimes. a long, debatable one. Very, very. Okay. With, the, with the likes of Daddy Freezer and yeah. many pastors doesn't. of today saying tight doesn't matter. Mm. The fact that we have people abusing it doesn't mean it is not required. Mm. Once you can understand the priesthood, you will know that tight is still necessary. Mm. Simple as that. All right, God bless you. All right, you have it there. Let's remember that next week is going to be a loaded week. We're having uh, from Sunday 24th to 27th of March, we'll be having the youth camp program. And then from um, Thursday, the 28th to the 31st of March, which is Sunday, um, 2024, we'll be having the family deliverance program. So make sure that you do not miss the program. Make sure you are present. For those trying to register for the youth program, you can always register when you come to the camp program. You, even if you can't get access online, when you are here and when you come, you get the opportunity to register here. And make sure you invite someone for every, for each of these programs that we'll be holding. Um, do not miss it. From every one of us right here. And before that, uh, okay, just um, keep that in mind. And from every one of us, is Shalom. Shalom, God bless you. See you every Monday on this TV station, 7 p.m. for Ask the Pastor. God bless you. Ready for an adventure filled with faith, fun, and unforgettable memories? Look no further. Our annual youth camp is back. Team, with God, all things are possible. Faith, 24 to 27th of March, location at the Bright Assembly Lagos Church. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, in verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. But he added again, This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out the devil. He give us power to cast out any devil that will come on any believer. You have no right because the blood of Jesus Christ has set him free. Those who are connected to the cross, believers connected to the cross, are entitled to go for deliverance. The Bride Assembly Lagos Church presents an annual prayer program. Theme My Family Deliverance. My Family Deliverance Program. It's all about family deliverance. Come and experience a turnaround. Come and stand in the gap for your family. My Family Deliverance Program. Featuring prayer ring, scriptural revelations, praise and worship, prophetic ministration. And I saw, and this one is from Imo State. Yes, I'm from Imo State. Oh, Haji. Yes, I'm from Imo oh, And there is another yeah. person from Delta State. It's only three buildings, uh, one, two, building, two buildings that are, two, three buildings, but two of them are the most good one, the other one is the small one. Exactly. Confirm. Just celebrate Jesus. Idiot. If you say that somebody went, I will naked myself and curse him, which yes, you sir. did. Yes, I did. I see in the spirit, you are crying every day at all. Prophetic actions. Every member 
of the family, the list that you are touching that bad luck with, they shall receive freedom. Blood of Jesus Christ, speak for me. Shall we go? Speak for my family. Uh -huh. Open that that bad luck. Open, open, open. Power of the spoken word and lots more. Day, Thursday, 28th to Saturday, 30th, March, 2024. Time, 10 p.m. daily. Venue, the Bride Assembly Church Lagos, in the Vaclos, Udafi Park Estate, off Alakoso Avenue, Ijesha Bus Stop, along Osho, the Apapa Expressway, Lagos, Nigeria. Ministry, Brother Moses Ali, Overseer, of the Bride Assembly Church Lagos. Loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Your dream is loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Your vision is loose in the name of Jesus Christ. You are loose. Lose them, lose their spiritual life. Lose them, lose them. My family deliverance. My family deliverance program. For inquiries, please contact plus 23480-2529-X026. Or call plus 234-70-3211. 32955. We also will be streaming live all through our social media platform YouTube, Facebook, and the Bride mobile app. My family deliverance. A change in my family for good. Shalom to all eternal beings worldwide.